So here we are uh, with the instrument. We've taken all the paint off. We've got that primer off, um, and we've got like a, there was some kind of sealant layer or something on some kind of sand and sealer had been put down. So it's all come off. So we're completely down to the bare wood. And um, some of the marks and dings that we were looking at. And um, if I can find you one, just here. See example this ding here. Um, it was so deep it's gone right into the wood so you can actually get your finger in there a little bit and these are the kind of details that we're hoping to replicate when after we've done our sunburst and our white paint be little knocks like that so it'll be easy to find where that is because it's so deep but we've got a few little marks and scratches as well now we could keep sanding and going right down and get them completely out of it but we risk changing some of the curves on the instrument and that's definitely not something we want to be doing so it's uh, pretty smooth now kind of we've gone over it with uh, a few various different grits of sandpaper so what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to refine it slightly again with some more uh, grits of sandpaper uh, make sure all our edges and stuff are clean and what we're going to do is begin the sunbursting process and we're going to do it a little bit differently than a regular sunburst instead of trying to airbrush on or use uh, spray cans for uh, to get the three different colors what we're going to do is we're going to stain the wood so we're yellow, red and black to make up the sunburst. It'll just mean that our paint uh, isn't going to have to go on really thick. There won't be three layers of paint and then lacquer on top of that. And then the white paint and more lacquer will just be way too thick. So if we just use our stains, it'll keep it nice and thin. Then we can put our white layer on. And as we chip away at the white layer, it'll expose the black. And maybe the yellow and reds in certain places. And then finally, instead of using what I'd normally use like a tough 2k lacquer we're just going to use a very light coat of a, a clear coat on it so it'll, it'll age well and it'll, it will take a few knocks and that kind of and show some nice wear and over time the little dings and stuff like that we, uh, will start to show up a little bit more and hopefully by the time we've done all that it'll be back looking exactly how uh, Pete wants it so our next stage is going to be as I said just refine uh, the edges and stuff and then we'll start our sunbursting process so as I said uh, we've got the body completely sanded now and uh, we're going to start off with some uh, crimson guitars uh, stunning stains yellow and we're just going to do most of the front of the guitar and we'll do the uh, back as well uh, just to start to create the sunburst pattern so we don't need to go right to the edge because we're going to have another red layer and then black all the way around the edge uh, the good uh, thing about this as well is the sunburst isn't going to be the final colour so we can use this kind of as a test to get it started so as we start to put the stain on because it's water based it'll start to sink into the wood so as I said we had that uh, kind of plasticky sealer layer on it if we've missed any spots or anything like that the stain won't soak in on that spot so we'll be able to pick out any high areas and stuff and make sure we get rid of that plastic uh, sealer before we go forward so we'll just start here now with our yellow stain. So this is Robbie in the future and I'm just going to cut across the other guy to say what Robbie back then had forgotten to do was actually use grain filler on the body before he started doing any of the staining process. So as soon as we started to paint it with our white you see we've got all these little gaps here in the wood that should have been filled by grain filler. So what we're going to do is sand the body back completely to bare wood again use our grain filler all over and then start the staining process so we'll cut back to the other guy and he's doing the process that is going to occur after this when we actually should have done the grain filling before we did our staining so let's take you back to that guy and he'll go on with the staining process just start to brush that in as I said we're not going to go all the way to the edge with this just reasonably close to it because there will be no need to I can already see that the stain is starting to soak in really well in most areas which is a good sign so it means we hopefully got rid of all that uh, plasticky sealer and as I said uh, with this body it's an absolutely lovely piece of ash and it's starting to come up lovely now by just putting the stain on so we're not even going to need more than you know maybe two coats of this stain just to make sure it's nice and even everywhere that it's nicely soaked in and then we'll come back and we'll do our red uh, around the edges and then our black on top of that so that's our 
Force layer. That's the yellow. You can see it's kind of ambery, just like the, the sunburst would be, and it's soaking in quite well. Um, and as I said, the grain on this ash is gorgeous, and it's coming out really well underneath this sunburst. So, as I said, we'll just let this soak in for a good while. We'll come back with a second coat. You can see these two areas here where I think we didn't get all of the plastic sealer off and as I said it's good that it comes up now that we can see it so we'll just scrape that area again and recoat it with some stain but that area is going to be completely covered by the pit guard anyway and it's going to be covered by a layer of white paint and we have another spot just down here and maybe one up there but we'll just get them perfect anyway uh, before we uh, move on to start doing the uh, red and then black around the edges so uh, moving on to do the back now, and same again. We'll just concentrate towards the uh, the center, and just we won't go too close to the uh, the edge. And as I said, this wood is absolutely gorgeous. I am probably going to cry when I have to spray uh, white paint over this. It is absolutely a gorgeous piece of ash. And you can just see we've got a little burn mark here, uh, just where we were a bit too aggressive with the sanding. But as I said, this whole area will be covered in black anyway, and then it's also going to get that uh, <laughs> layer of white paint on top as well. So uh, it's nothing to uh, worry about. So this is soaking in lovely, really showing off the grain of this wood. So we'll just let that soak in uh, for a few minutes, come back with a second coat and that should be us uh, done with this first uh, layer of yellow. Uh, we'll be coming back to do our red around the outside and then finally black and then we'll be coming back to the yellow and we'll just use the yellow to kind of blur and fan everything in together to give us that nice uh, slow transition sunburst effect. Okay, so the yellow is being done, and um, it doesn't have to be too neat because we're going to be going over it now with some uh, Crimson Guitars uh, Stunning Stains Red, and we're just going to go around the edge of this kind of and just bleed the two in, and then once that's done, uh, we'll be coming back with uh, the black around the edge as well. So, I'll just get this uh, started here. So when we go from orange to red to black, we come back with the yellow then and just kind of smooth everything in and just blurs all the lines of the whole lot. So now we're just going to, we're back to yellow. And we're just going to blur all this edge so it's not as harsh. And it'll just give us that kind of, you know, bleeding in effect. Where instead of it just being a harsh line, one colour fades into the other. So you can see the line starts to slightly disappear. And it just kind of, you know, helps keep things smoother rather than just a harsh uh, yellow and red transition. It gives us this kind of orangey mix along here. Which is exactly the, as we said, the burst kind of effect we want. So this is roughly the effect we're looking for where we've got yellow here, red here, and just a smooth transition between the two rather than the harsh line. So when we come back and do all the edges with black, it'll all just fade from black to red into our yellow here and give us the sunburst we're looking for. So unfortunately we forgot to hit record there. But um, we've just put on our first coat of black and we've just kind of established our uh, outline, our perimeter kind of. And you can see the harsh transition from black to reddish, the kind of yellow happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to let that black dry in a bit, come back once again and completely darken it. And then we'll take our yellow and our reds and we'll just blur this line here. We'll probably take it in a bit deeper and just blur it slightly and feather it all in so we get a smooth transition from the black fading out to the uh, reddish orange here and then fading into our yellow. 